Okay, let's get this show on the road. Hopefully everything's working okay. Hopefully all the technology is is working. I'm going to find out any second if I'm if everything's working. I'm just going to refresh my browser and see if I can see me and hear me. And that'll be the, my first sound check. Technology is, is working. I'm going to find out any second. Yeah. There you go. I can I can see me and I can hear me. It seems everything's working okay. If you can uh, uh, let me know if uh, if you can all see me and hear me okay. Uh, if there's any problems, we might have to restart. I, I did that a fortnight ago uh, on, on my last one. Uh, we, we had some terrible technology problems and uh, I, had, I had to restart about 15 minutes in. But uh, we, we got through it and after I'd restarted, um, it, uh, it all worked out okay. Uh, so uh, as you, as everybody's coming in and, and having us getting a seat and getting themselves comfortable, uh, please sign into the chat, say hello, and I'll uh, I'll say hello back to you. It's, it's uh, all of those that have already said said hello, and I'm really pleased to have you here. It's uh, it's it's great, especially after after what happened last week. Um, of course, last week we were supposed to do to have a webinar, live webinar, but. Um, the day before we had the, the terrible terrorist attacks in Manchester uh, and I like to um, smile and laugh and joke in, in all of my um, my webinars and to be honest I really didn't feel like it um, it, it had a really bad effect on uh, the whole of the UK um, the it's it, it's been quite quite bad um, so uh, I, I decided that, that the best thing I could do was just to put it off for a week, let everything settle down, um, start to get some positivity back in, in into everybody's lives, and uh, so, so, so I'm, I'm really sorry if you'd signed up for last week's and you were disappointed that there, were, that there wasn't one. But you haven't missed anything. Anything I haven't done one since. Um, this is the one that I would have done last week. So uh, I'm glad you're all here with me. Uh, as I said, um, don't don't be shy. Say hello in the uh, in the in the chat window, and I'll I'll say hello back to you. Uh, while everybody's getting settled in, uh, I want to ask uh, a couple of questions, just to get everybody. Uh, uh, comfortable with, with with what they're doing. Okay, so question: Do you use descriptive statistics to clean your data? Who uses descriptive statistics to clean their data? Of course, the 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 first thing that people do when they first start to um, to have to handle data in Excel, it's the, every, pretty much everybody starts in Excel. They get a data set and they start scrolling down and looking at it by eye to see if they can spot any errors. Uh, and everything is done completely and utterly manually. Um, I, I'm obviously trying to encourage you to go through more automated means than that, and that's what this uh, this webinar is, is about today. Um, but of course, descriptive statistics is one of the ways uh, in which we can get an understanding of our data set and that we can start to work with our data set by automated means. Uh, so BVD, thank you. Uh, yes, he uses uh, descriptive statistics in R. Good. Yeah, so you're a little bit of a statistics programmer. Uh, there won't be anything in here about R, but um, hopefully all the um, all the lessons that I that I give, although I do them in Excel, um, they should be transportable into other programming languages in, uh, into other software so that you can you can take what you learn and uh, apply it somewhere else. So thank you for that. Um, so uh, descriptive statistics, do you use it to clean your data? Okay, that's the first question. Uh, the second question is, uh, in your opinion, which Excel formulae are the most useful for this? So which formulae in Excel are useful to clean your data, whether they are descriptive statistics or I, I guess any other kind of formula that you might use. What is really useful for you in Excel when you're cleaning your data? So Stat Truth is trying to learn that. Okay, good. Uh, hopefully you're in the right place. You might learn something good. Hi Uwe, good to have you here. Thank you very much for, um, for signing in. It's uh, it's nice to see uh, see there's plenty of people signed in today. Uh, it's uh, it's great to have so many people here. It's it's really good. So okay, um, uh, 
Okay. <laughs> okay, Laura says she forgot to click play and couldn't hear anything. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> okay. I, I, can, I can sort of help with some technology issues, but um, telling you to click to, pl to click play, play before, you've, before you're in, I, I can't really help you with that. <laughs> Uh, th thank you very much for, for being so honest. <laughs> okay, um, Richard. Hi, Richard. Good to have you here. Um, so the questions. Um, don't don't be shy about typing questions into the chat screen. I will uh, I, I will stop and look at that from, periodically from time to time, and I'll I'll answer all your questions. Um, for the moment, the questions I'm asking, as everybody's filing in and getting a getting a seat, uh, I've couple of questions is do you use descriptive statistics to clean your data that's the first question and the second is in your opinion which Excel formulae are the most useful for cleaning your data okay you can ask me the you answer answer those questions in the chat screen and I will I will answer them straight away okay so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make a start. It's uh, we're only a few minutes, few minutes in, and I'm I'm, I'm sure a, a few people will still be sitting down. But yeah, time waits for no man. So we've got to move on with this. Um, I'm I'm sure some of you. Okay, John, John says minimum, maximum, st uh, standard deviation range, the usual suspect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They they are uh, they are. Very useful, useful things. Yeah, BVD. I, I I agree with John too. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, they're pretty much pretty much standard uh, standard usage. But they're very powerful. They're simple to use and they're powerful. You get a good uh, understanding of of your data set. Uh, thank you for that uh, for that, John. Uh, Richard says he's used Excel for years, but I'm in the process of moving to Python. Yeah, I I, I did the same thing. I. I I did mine in, in Excel for years, and, and I, I moved into uh, into MATLAB. Um, I, I I did a lot of programming in, in in MATLAB. That was that was where I uh, where I did most of my work. But yeah, Python's a good language. We um, at Chi Squared Innovations, we do a lot of Python programming here. Uh, so our, our guys are, are, are very very uh, very good at it now. Uh, very well versed in it. Um, okay, so I'm. I'm going to start start uh, making a start here. So, um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Lee Baker. I'm the CEO of Chi Squared Innovations, uh, and I've worked with data a lot uh, over the past ooh, about 20 years now. I've I've worked on the Visible Human Project. I worked on the Human Genome Project, on a European soil database, uh, and after that, I worked as a, a medical statistician for about seven years. Um, and um, in all that time, I had to learn a lot about not just data, but manipulating data in lots of different things. So Excel was one of the, obviously, one of the first first things that I started with. Um, and of course, before you can do anything with your data, you've got to clean it. And it's a, it's a really unsexy task to have to do, but it's absolutely important. It's so critical. If you can't clean your data, you can't analyze it. So I, this is why I'm, I do a, lo a lot of webinars about uh, about data cleaning to try and try and get every, everybody getting used to the, the basics. And, and so th that's what, what this webinar is, is about today. Today, we're gonna to be talking about cleaning numerical data in Excel um, uh, using descriptive statistics. I'm gonna use a, a, a couple of <clears throat> Formulae in particular, count and count if, but I'm going to be using a few others as well. So it's it's not just as John says that uh, minimum, maximum, and so on. There are a few other formulae that uh, actually I, th I think are probably more more powerful than than those. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so he here's what you're going to learn in this webinar. If you stick around long enough, um, we're going to use we're going to learn how to use descriptive stats. We're going to learn the count formula and the count if formula and a few other things as well to help us along. And we're going to automate or at least make a start in automating the cleaning of numerical data. Okay, Richard says pivot tables. Yep, I haven't done a great deal uh, with pivot tables. By the time you get to that, um, you're not so much cleaning data as actually starting to do some analyses with it. Um, and by the time I start to get to use 
to, to do analyses, I'm moving data out of Excel and putting it somewhere else to do the analyses. Uh, Minitab is, is one of the programs that I've, I've used a lot over the years, although these days I, I tend to use my own statistics uh, programs, uh, Data Cleaner, CoralViz, and a few other routines that I've, I've written over the years. So StatTruth uh, has used Countif to categorize the data, kind of string search in a column. We're going to be talking about exactly that today. So uh, yeah, you, you've, uh, you've you've got a good a good idea of, of what we're going to be talking about already. You've done a bit of this. Good, 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 good. So you you already understand it. Okay. So to get the best out of this workshop, if you can turn your phones off, close your browser tabs, close the door, get a big mug of coffee, get yourself comfortable, pen and paper. Feel free to take notes. Take as many notes as you want. There will be a replay of this. Um, I'm going to put it on the website after we've finished. That's as long as all the technology works okay. Um, but if it does, there'll be a replay and uh, you can come back to it anytime you like. But it's always good to take notes anyway. Okay, so uh, as I said, um, I, I've already spoken a little bit about, about my background. Um, I, I've, I've worked for almost 20 years with with, with data and my, my the last job I did before I moved on to, to set up my own company was as a med medical statistician uh, and I had um, my job really was uh, as a as a statistical st ugh, I can't even say it statistical consultant try saying that it's really hard statistical consultant for everybody else so I didn't have my own data sets it just everybody brought their data sets to me and I had to analyze them but I had to clean them first. Uh, and, and this was a big problem because it was typically two weeks per data set to get them cleaned. Um, and so it, it just really made gave a big a big problem because the progress was always slow. Uh, I couldn't do anything until I'd, I'd cleaned them. So I needed to learn how to use Excel more efficiently and effectively. You needed to learn the functions and formulae. And, and that's what I, I, I now try to, try to help you guys with. So uh, we're going to... I'm going to jump in now. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to get get started uh, <clears throat> with some numbers. I'm going to open up my my Excel, and hopefully, if all the technology works okay. Now, uh, right, which one am I clicking? I think I'm clicking that one. Oh, there it is. Look. So we've got we've got Excel, and I've just got one column of of data. You'll see two columns here. You'll see um, unique ID and age. Of course, I, if you've uh, if you've hung around me long enough, you'll know that um, I always insist on having a unique ID with uh, with the data because the most important reason is that if you need to uh, order your data, sort your data by, uh, by by a particular column, you might want to uh, restore the original order. The only way to do that is to have a unique ID column. There are other uses, and actually we're going to see some other uses of a unique ID column today. Uh, I, I actually use them in, in calculations. So uh, I always insist that we have an ID, a unique ID column. But for now, we've got, uh, we've got an age column, which is our data. The data that we're going to, the numerical data that we're going to clean. Oh, I've got a case of the hiccups tonight. I don't know what's going on. Uh, okay. Anyway, so we've got um, we've got our, our age, and uh, I'm going to move on to the next. This is just the raw data, so I'm going to move on to the next sheet to show uh, a few different problems that we've got with it. So what I've done here is I've highlighted a number of different problems that we've got with this data. These different types of, of issue that we might have. So in here, I've got uh, there's a, there's a letter A. Okay, so what I've done here, uh, another thing I always insist on is uh, that you should never leave any cell empty. If it's empty, there should be a reason why it's empty. Either we don't have the data or the data was inaccurate or uh, we're waiting for the lab or whatever. There might be a number of different reasons. But if you put a code in there, a letter code to tell you why there is no data for that cell, uh, you then you the information is actually in there, uh, and so I I always insist on putting putting these codes in, and I've I've highlighted this in in yellow here so that we can see uh, that there's there's some text in here one of our codes, uh, 
I've also highlighted a, a negative number, an empty cell, a zero. There might be other mistakes, uh, all sorts of things wrong with this. And I, I'm not going to scroll down. This data could be tens of thousands of rows. And what we don't want to do is start looking at it by eye. We want to start automating everything we do about it. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to basically put put this data to one side and we're going to start doing some work with it to try to understand the data without looking at it. So you get a feel for what you've got and what you haven't got. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next sheet now. Um, the first sheet I'm going to do is um, these are some descriptive statistics that um, that I'm, I'm doing, uh, and only I'm only categorising here the different numerical entries that we've got. So what I've done here is I've said I want to take account in column B of all those entries that are greater than zero, and that's the positive numbers. So we've got 49 positive numbers in this column of data in column B. Okay, so that's this is our count if. I've done the same for the negative numbers. So for, I'm using count if to count all those numbers that are less than zero. And here they are, there's nine of them. And I've used count if as well for uh, to count the number of zeros. Uh, so it, so in there you just put in the number zero in, it, in our count if statement. <coughs> and we have four zeros. So Obviously, in terms of the uh, the different types of numbers that we can have, every number is either positive, negative, or zero. Th there's no other there's no other way for a number to be. Uh, so it's counted up all the positives, all the negatives, all the zeros, and we now have a subtotal here, sixty two. So this is adding up the sum of uh, each of these, right? So that's my subtotal. I'm calling it a subtotal. And what I do then is, for every calculation that I do, I always like to have uh, an additional calculation to try to calculate the same measure by a different route. So that if I've made a mistake, I can usually find it. So I try to have, uh, as much as I can, two different ways, two different routes of arriving at the same destination, okay? And I've done that here with this number count. So here I've said I want to use the count formula to count all the numbers in column B. Now that's counting all the numbers. That's positives, negatives, and zeros. It doesn't break it down by the different, the different types. It just gives you all of them all together. So what I've done is I've used count to count up all of the numbers. I've used count if to, to categorize the numbers as positive, negative, zero, and then sum them all. These two things should be exactly the same. Okay, and they are, they're both 62. So without scrolling down our data set, we now know that we have 62 numbers in this numerical column. We don't know how many entries we've got, but what we do know is that we've got 62 numerical entries. There could be tens of thousands of text entries and empty cells and all sorts of things, but we have 62 numbers. Okay, so we've done that. We've bagged it, we've tagged it. Let's put it to one side. Let's move on to the next category of things that we might have in this in this in these data. Okay, what about non-numeric entries, says Richard. Aha, here we are. Next one. Descriptive statistics, text. So here we are. So, as we said, what I always insist on is putting in codes for cells that have no data in. So they would be empty cells, but we don't want to have empty cells. We put in a code to tell us about how to, uh, about whether our data has not been collected or whether we're waiting for the lab or the data was inaccurate so that yeah so you haven't entered it or whatever could be lots of reasons so i've used here uh, a b c and d four different codes to tell us why we have no data right and the there might be other text entries in there there might be a misspelling somebody might have might have actually written something in a note 
rather than a code. So we need to we need to bag and tag all of these. So what I've done is I've used countif here to count all the entries in column B uh, that correspond to the letter A, and there's one. I've done the same with B, C, and with D. So we have a one A, two Bs, two Cs, two Ds. I've also used countif. Now bear with me in this one. I'll 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 talk through this. We use the wildcard entry here to tell us uh, how many text entries we have in the entire column. Okay, all the text entries. Now notice that our variable name is a text entry. So we can count up all the text entries and subtract one from the total to give us all the text entries within the data set, excluding the header. And from that, I then subtract all of our codes, okay, which are seven. So we've added up all of the text entries and we've subtracted from it our header name, which is text, and we've subtracted from that all our codes to tell us why we don't have an entry. And what we have is zero. So there are no other text entries in this data, in these data. Add them all up, we come to seven, and we have uh, worked out by a, a different method how many we have in total, and so it's, uh, it tallies, the, the two things come together, and we have seven. So, so here we are, we now know how many numerical values that we've got, and we've categorized them by type. We have now worked out how many text entries that we've got, and we've categorized them by their various entries. Uh, okay, so let's move on. We've got numbers, we've got text. What's left for us to count? Empty cells. Despite me saying that um, we always try to have a code in there to tell us why we don't have data, sometimes things slip through the net, and we may well have empty cells, and we need to count them up as well. So let's move on. Next sheet, empty cells, here we are. So what I've done here is, um, I said before that, um, oh by the way, is, is, is everybody following me so far? Is, is, there, is there anything that's not obvious? Let me know um, in, the, in the chat screen uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see where we are with this. Okay, while I'm waiting for, for your answers to come in, I'm, I'm gonna continue with this. All right, in terms of um, counting the number of empty cells, what I've done here is I've calculated the length of the data set. And to do that, I'm counting all the numbers in column A. Richard, you're following me? Good, thank you very much. I'm counting all the numbers in column A. So I'm using our unique ID column, of which there should be nothing other than consecutive integers, which may or may not be in order because you, you might have resorted them, but let's assume that they are in order. Okay, so we've counted, we, we've, we've done a count of all the integers, all the numbers in our unique ID column, and we've got 72. Binary and hex values. Binary as in, uh, okay, if, if, it's, if it's binary as in 11001, and so on, then that's, that's just a straightforward n number, it's a numerical, and hex values, they've got letters and numbers, so they will be seen as text. So same again, um, they are both seen as either numerical or text. Um, okay, so what we've done here is we've got, uh, sorry, thank you for that mainframe data, logs, etc. Okay, okay. We <laughs> You're trying to catch me out here, Richard. <laughs> okay, as, as far as Excel is concerned, everything is either numerical, text, or empty cells. The, as, far, as far as I'm aware, um, it doesn't recognize things as anything other than numerical, text, or empty cells. Uh, right, so, continuing with this. We count up all of the numerical entries and we have 72. That's in unique ID. So that's the length of our data set. 
and in our um, I'm going to count up here all the numbers and the text entries that we've already calculated. And that's 69. And the difference must be the empty cells. There must be nothing else. Okay? So we've counted up uh, all the empty cells. And we've, count, we've done a count blank to count up all the empty cells within our column B. And that comes out to be 3. So we now know that we have 3 empty cells within the data set. Okay, so putting all of this together, we now know that we have 62 numerical entries. Some of them positive, some negative, and some of them are zeros. We have text entries. We have seven of them. Some of them are our codes, and some of them may well be uh, other text entries. As we know, there aren't any in this particular data set, but there could have been. Uh, and we have three empty cells. Add those all up, you get 72. And if we do a count of uh, all the numbers in our unique ID column, we again get 72. So we've confirmed this data set, this particular uh, variable is 72 entries long. We've bagged and tagged every entry that we have in it. We now know exactly what we've got in our data set and we haven't even looked at it. And this is how powerful uh, descriptive stati statistics is. We now know everything that's in our data set and we know how many of them we've got. So we now know how much work that we've got to do to be able to clean this data and get it ready for analysis or ready to add into your database, wh whatever it is that you're wanting to do with this, with these data. <clears throat> but although we know what data we've got, we don't know where these data are. So we need to find some way of actually quickly identifying these, all these different things. So let's, let's go with them one by one. The next sheet is, is one I've called NEGS. And what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to tag every negative cell. So what we've done here is we've added in uh, a third column. We called it negative cells. And within this, um, we're going to reference the uh, its adjacent cell and say if the number that you find in there is less than zero, I want you to put in into this column the word negative. If that's not the case, leave it empty. Okay, so the so this first one is a positive number, so that that's not negative, so it should stay empty. Next is positive, empty. Next is a text entry so so that we don't that doesn't uh, that stays empty as well uh, we got keep going further down we get a negative number there and it gives us our negative okay thank thanks for uh, thanks for joining us john unfortunately john's got to go um uh, yeah i guess he'll have to catch up a little bit later it's good to see you thanks for thanks for being here john and i'll uh, i'll catch up with you later on Okay, so what we so what we're doing with this is we're tagging every cell that that has a negative in it. Okay, all the way down to the bottom. Once we've done that, we know now where all the negative values are. It might be a very very long data set, but we can, we can deal with that, and we'll come back to that uh, a, a, a little bit later. Uh, we, but we've tagged all the negatives. Now we're going to do the same with all the empty cells. So uh, we do the same here. We say if uh, B2 is blank, then I want you to put into this cell the word empty. Otherwise, uh, l leave it. Just don't don't put anything in there. Okay. So we this is a, a number, a number, a text, number, 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 empty cell. So it puts in the word empty. There it is. Okay. And again, all the way down. So we've tagged all the empty cells, and then we do exactly the same with the zero cells. So if uh, if it's if the cell is empty is is a zero sorry it's it's not a blank it's not blank but it is zero otherwise you'll get a zero in that one as well you, uh, for this one so the the it, it must be um, the cell must be non blank and equal to zero and it gives us a zero okay 
then the next one we're tagging all our text so it goes down and so we, we it's just simply asking it is it is it text and it, and it is so it, it, it gets all the text and puts them in okay so we've now bagged and tagged all our negatives all our empties all our zeros and all the text values of course there's something that I've missed out from here I've not tagged all the positive entries well, the reason why is because well this is an age variable everybody uh, the age of anything must be positive so actually we're not interested to clean this data up we're not interested in the positive values we know that that's what we're looking for it's everything else that's not positive so I want to ignore the positives just take all the negatives the empties the zeros and the text and here we are this is what it looks like when I've put them all together so we've, we've tagged all the negatives, the empties, the zeros, and the text values. Uh, this data set is starting to grow a little bit now. Uh, we're starting to get more and more information. Uh, it's what's called metadata. But that's okay because we, we're going through a process of finding out what's in the data set automatically, counting all of these different types of things that's in the data set automatically, we are finding out exactly where all of these things are in the data set automatically and the next step is going to be that we're going to start to clean them up uh, as automated as possible it might not be possible to do it but we, we see what we can do okay so the first, before we move on the next thing we've got to do is we have got to check that uh, that we have actually tagged every single type of entry Okay, so uh, for the negatives we had nine. This is this is our, our original data. This is calculating all of the positives, negatives, zeros, and so on from the data itself. Whereas here, when we're doing our checking, I'm not doing any calculations on our data. I'm doing calculations based on the uh, our text columns that we've just just built. Okay, so we're using COUNTIF here to count all the words corresponding to negative in column C, and that's nine. So we now know that uh, we, we've confirmed that we have nine negative entries. I've done the same thing for zero. We have four confirmed. For the letters A, B, C, and D, yep, here we are. They're all confirmed. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit for empty cells. I've done a count if on column D for the word empty to tell us that we have three, which is exactly the same as what we expect to find. So we now know that we have we have correctly identified every single cell in our data that requires our attention. And it's not been terribly difficult to do. Now, of course, what, what you can do is before you um, before you're going to start uh, cleaning all your data you can set up an Excel workbook just like this in advance and then once you've done it you can drop in your data and everything will just suddenly be calculated all for you and you'll know exactly what's in there and you can keep that workbook uh, to one side for future use and then you can reuse it and reuse it and reuse it time and time and time again so all of this that I've done, it looks like quite a lot, but if you've got a data set which is uh, a couple of dozen of text variables and a couple of dozen of numerical variables, you can take your numerical variables and one by one you can run them through your uh, workbook, this, this cleaning numerical data workbook to make things much, much quicker for you. You might need to make one or two adjustments along the way. Uh, for example, if you set it up for to have four different codes, A, B, C, and D, but actually you've got a different code as well, E, for something else that meant something else. Well, I guess that would come into the text of, of the other text. It would still be categorized, but you, you, you might want to know exactly where all the E's are. So, so anyway, you can build all this up in advance and you can work with it time after time. So now that we've got all of our data, what we can do is we can, uh, I've just moved on to uh, 
onto our, our data without any descriptive statistics on now. It's, it, we, we've, we've bagged and tagged everything. It's time to actually start to clean all of our data. So one of the ways in which we can do that. Okay, stat truth. Okay, 1 a.m. is... <laughs> Okay, well, I'm really pleased that you've stayed up so so late. Um, it's great to see you, and uh, hopefully you'll 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 catch up with me later. Okay, in terms of filter, what what we can do now is uh, we go over and we we click sort and filter. We can add a filter into this, and so we can say, okay, I want to now list all of the new all the all of the negative entries that I've got. And find out exactly where they are so that I can go back to my original data and check it out check out what the problem is again we don't want to scroll down by eye tens of thousands of rows what we can do is we can filter it we can take out the blanks and we can click OK and here we are here's a listing of all the negatives all those rows with a negative value in here and our unique ID column tells us exactly which particular data entries correspond to this data. So, for example, if you've got uh, all of your data um, originally stored in paper-based form, you can you can have your reams of paper and you can start flicking through them now. I'm looking for unique ID six. One, two, three, four, five, six. First one. Okay, here we are. What is their age? Should they? I'm sure they shouldn't be minus 32 years old, but how old are, are they? The, uh, actually, the age is probably calculated from the difference between two dates. The difference between their date of birth and maybe uh, their date of diagnosis. For example, if, if we're talking about uh, some medical data. Um, so it, it's, it's often the difference between two dates. And sometimes you've got the dates the wrong way around. Somebody's entered the dates the wrong way around. So... The dates are correct, but the, the sense of the number is incorrect. It's the wrong way around. So, but once you've once you've you've found your problem, you can then go and deal with it. You can clean it. Okay, so I can take off this filter. Uh, okay, select all. We could do the same for the empty cells. Remove all the blanks. Leave just the empties. So here's a listing of all of our empty cells. Again, unique ID. 8, 26, 34. You just go straight to those uh, those particular data um, data uh, entries, uh, paper-based forms or wherever it is that you store the original data and just check it out straight away. D do we actually have the data for this? Or you can you can you can say okay, right, this this should have been I'm I'm waiting for the lab for this. So okay, let, let's let's chase it up at the lab, see what's going on. And then you can uh, you, you can clean that data up, make sure it, it's okay. Of course, I, I am talking here about um, we, we are trying to automate as much as we possibly can. But when it comes to cleaning um, numerical data, most of your data cleaning is actually going to be manual. It's just that um, you've got to identify all of the problems that you've got. And once you've got that, you then find out what the real number should be. And it's probably you're probably going to have to enter it manually. You're probably going to have to type it in, in most cases. So same again with the zeros. I can take out all the blanks, and here are, here are all, all the zero cells, here are the zeros, and here are the unique IDs. So you can go and check them out. Okay, our clear filter. And in our coded cells, so we can take all our A, B, Cs, Ds, take out all the blanks, and here are all the, all the cells with text codes in them, so that we can go and uh, check them all out. So it just makes it uh, really, really easy by being organized about your data, um, by being organized about your formulae, by understanding the formulae, how to use them, how to categorize the different types of data that you've got, maybe the different types of errors that you've got. Uh, and then you can, it's very, very simple to, to bag and tag all of these, get a listing of them all, use sort and filter to be able to tell you exactly where in your data set all of these individual problems are, and then you can go and clean them very quickly, very easily. It hasn't taken me very long at all to do this. It's taken me, it's taken me half an hour 
uh, I know the, uh, the 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 whole um, worksheet is or the workbook is is, is built. I, I I built it, um, but it's only taken me half an hour to explain it to you, and and it could be reused time and time and time again on lots of different variables. Uh, you might have twenty different text, uh, sorry, numerical variables to clean in one data set. You can see how how easy it is now to to get one of them drop it into this this workbook and uh clean it and then you, you move on to your next one then you drop that one in and everything automates for you and it's so quick so easy just being organized and bagging and tagging everything and this is something that uh, um this is the journey of, of of making the transition from um from manual data cleaning to automated data cleaning and it, it's what I it's what I spend a lot of my time teaching um, okay so that, that's that's sort of got to the end now of the um, of the live demo part uh, I, I want to talk a little bit more uh, now about about actually the teaching that I that I do or the teaching of the different kinds of data cleaning that I do and all the automation uh, so I'm going to switch back I'm going to switch back now to I'm going to switch back to here for the moment um, and okay so I, I'm gonna go now to my PowerPoint hopefully this works okay should do okay so <coughs> again if there's any questions feel free to drop the um, drop your questions into the um, into the, the the chat screen and I'll I'll, I'll get straight to it So what I'm, I want to talk about now is um, that I, I do a lot of teaching. I, I teach a lot about, um, about cleaning data, not just cleaning data. So I'm going to talk about, if you put the letter, uh, if you put the letter O instead of the number zero, Excel truncates the cell like 1.202 becomes 1.2. So count count cell as number or text or both okay um i i've okay that's interesting i, I that's a, that's a situation i've not come up against uh, i've not seen before that excel um truncating the number because there's a there's a letter in there i i've often seen letters and and numbers within as in a hexadecimal and it, it just leaves it alone, completely leaves it alone. Um, I've not seen, I've not, I've never actually seen it truncate it. Um, becomes one point two, so the the count counts the cell as a number or text or both. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. You, you might tell me. You might tell me the answer to that one, Ree. Uh, thank you for asking that question. Interesting. Um, so I, as I was saying. Um, I set up the Data Science University so that I could uh, I could teach uh, all things to do with data science. I'm I'm a data scientist of, of uh, about twenty years now, and I've got I've picked up a lot of knowledge um, and experience along the way, and I want to teach all of this. And so this is where I, I I do my teaching now, and it's it's uh, online video courses and dedicated to teaching data science to beginners in particular. And the first course is open now. It's data cleaning in Excel for analysts and researchers. Uh, and um, there's a, a lot of lessons in there. Um, and the lesson I've just given you now uh, is 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 part of is part of the course. So you've already just received a, a part of the course. Uh, Richard says, "Try it." Okay, I, I I absolutely will try it. I'm not going to try it right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I will. I'll, I'll finish. I'm going to finish this webinar now. But I will try it, and I will. I will see what comes out of that. I'm very interested to sit, to try that out and see see it. Okay, so in in the in the course, um, the course is all about uh, data collection, data cleaning, uh, coding, and classifying your data so that you understand it better. Uh, it's also I also talk about uh, data integrity because uh, data is is extracted from from real life. Uh, and so real life has rules, and so your data must have rules. 
Uh, okay, Uwe, thanks, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll catch up with you later. Um, you will also get, as part of the course, uh, a, a course bonus. Oh, and yes, and, and also we go through working smarter, not harder, which is completely automating your, your data. So you will never have to do manual data cleaning again. And there's a, a course bonus at the end of the course. Curriculum is open now, it's live, and there's free content available. So you can go over to the course. You can go over right now and start to watch some of the videos that I've, that I've put on there uh, that's uh, marked as, as free content. And what you'll learn in the course is my entire data cleaning method. Now, I haven't mentioned anything about this, but uh, in the seven years that I worked as a, a medical statistician, working with everybody else's data set, I had to learn how to use um, functions and formulae much more effectively and efficiently. So um, I, I, actually, I actually had to build a whole data cleaning method so that I could get through the data cleaning very, very quickly and get onto the analysis because people were waiting. I typically had about uh, 12 different projects going at any one time, and that's a huge amount. And if each one is gonna take me two weeks to clean the data before I can start analyzing, then I'm completely paralyzed. So I needed to be very, very quick with the data cleaning so I could get on with the analysis. And so I built a data cleaning method. It took me uh, several years to build it, and I'm gonna teach it to you all of it, everything, step by step. And I'm gonna teach you how to be organized with your data. I'll show you every Excel function and formula that you need to know to be able to clean your data. Uh, you'll also learn the, the order, the precise order in which you need to clean your data. If you get things out of order, then it will cost you a bit of time. You, you could introduce errors into your data set that you've already cleaned up before, so you'd need to go through the same step again. So yeah, I'm gonna teach you the precise order in which to clean your data. I'll also teach you the types of data that you'll encounter and how to clean them. And I'll show you how to use descriptive statistics to understand your data. You've already uh, got some understanding today of, of, of using descriptive statistics, uh, not just to understand your data, but how to clean your data as well. We haven't talked about um, distributions, uh, about um, whether you what the minimum and maximum values are to make sure that your data fits with your real life rules, um, but that's uh, their um, lessons that you can learn within within this course. The course itself it's uh, it's a video course, so uh, so every lesson is a video, and for every lesson you get all the lecture notes as well in a PDF format, and you get all the Excel code. For every lesson where I use Excel to, uh, to demonstrate something, to show you how to do it, to give you all the code, you get the Excel sheet that I work with. It, it has all the explanations in, uh, all the code, everything that you need. It's all in there. It's all right in there. Okay, here's a, here's a little screenshot that I've done of, um, of the interface. So when you, when you log in, uh, down the left hand side you've got a listing of all the lessons that you've got they're all numbered as well so that you can go through them in order you can go in order or you can go out of order and pick and choose which lessons you want to, to do in, in whatever order you, that you want I recommend that you go through them in order but you don't have to I, I'm not going to sit on your shoulder and force you to do it so you can go in whatever order you like uh, so that's on the left hand side is a listing of all the uh, of all the different lessons and all the downloads that, you, that you've got uh, to download. And um, on the right hand side is uh, the lesson screen. It's, it's where you will see the, the, the PDF lessons and the video lessons uh, and uh, anything that's, that's there to download. You just simply click and, and away it goes. Uh, so it's very very easy to work with you can uh, you can you can pause it you can fast forward it you can take it back you um you can you can make it go double speed and make me sound like uh, like alvin the chipmunk it's, it's great fun i love doing that and as well as as um as, as all the video lessons what you're going to get is um all the excel workbooks with the uh, with real examples and you get practical examples using the code with with real data real data real code real examples uh, and you get a really good 
a good feel for how to work with the data and, and, and how to use, use the method. Here's another uh, screenshot of uh, of 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 the um, of one of my lessons. What am I doing here? I, yeah, I'm 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 showing you how to do data validation with this one. So uh, so we, we're validating in this particular case um, some text a, a text column where the entries should be male or female. And so we we set up a we set up a list and we uh, we we connect our data up to that list so that you can get uh, drop downs. You can only enter perfectly clean data. You cannot enter incorrect data. Uh, and I, th there are reasons why you sometimes you would want to do that. And there are other reasons why sometimes you would not want to do that. And I explain the differences between when you would want to do it and when you would not want to use data validation. But anyway, that's we, we're not here to talk about data validation. But uh, okay, let's let's move on. That's a, that's a screenshot of me giving one of the um, one of the lessons. It's, I mean, it's. It looks very, very similar to what we, what we're doing right now in the webinar because I've used exactly the same technology to create and build the whole course as I as I'm using here for the for the webinar. Okay, as well as all the teaching material and, and all the videos and all the code and everything that you need, I'm going to give you some bonuses as well. Uh, for, for those of you that enroll on the course, I'm going to give you uh, a free 12-month license to Data Cleaner. Now, what is Data Cleaner? It's, it's my data cleaning program that I, that I built. Um, I realized that my data cleaning was just far, far too slow. Even if it took me a half a day, or even if it took me a couple of hours to clean the data set, it was too slow. I needed data sets to be cleaned in minutes. So I built it. I built a program to do that, to clean the data set and get it analysis ready. The, uh, actually, the intention was to do it so that it cleaned it in minutes. It doesn't do that. It cleans it in seconds. Uh, it's very, very powerful, very, very quick. It cleans your data set so quickly um, and it's completely and utterly automated. Okay, and I'm going to give you a, a, a free 12 month license to use it and uh, I'm going to give you 300 data cleaner credits as well to get you to get you a good start on your data cleaning. That package is worth $2,200 and I'm going to give it you for free just for taking this course. Uh, and the benefits of taking this course are that, are that you can fast track your data analysis. You get your data cleaned very, very quickly. Instead of weeks or days, you get it done in hours. And if you start to use data cleaner in minutes, seconds, uh, it saves you loads of time. Doing this course saves you so much time and it makes your boss happy because you turn things around very quickly. You turn all the analyses around quickly uh, and you make yourself happy as well. And I'll give you a guarantee. If you're not completely satisfied with the course, come and tell me why you're not happy and what you feel is missing. If I can't fix it and make you happy in 30 days, I will refund your money in full and you'll still keep access to the entire course. And this course right now is just $297. Now remember, it's a, it's a course that teaches you how to clean your data very very quickly so instead of cleaning in weeks you can get to clean your data in a matter of mm, an hour a couple of hours even for for larger data sets uh, I, I teach you how to make that trans transition from manual data cleaning into uh, automated data cleaning so that you can get things done very very quickly it saves you so much time i, I cannot I cannot tell you how much time it saves you. It, it's just hours and hours and days and weeks. Over, over my lifetime, I have lost months worth of time just by cleaning data uh, in a, in a non-automated fashion. I've wasted so much time, but I have learned how to do it and I have built this course so that I can teach you and it will cost you just $297. Now, this price will end on Thursday, the 1st of June. What day is it today? I think it's Tuesday today, isn't it? Yes. So, in two days. Uh, in two days, in exactly two days. 9 p.m. British Summer Time. That's 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time if you're in the U.S. Uh, and that's when this uh, the price will end. So, 
Uh, you can use the form on the page to purchase the course. That, this is what it looks like. It's right underneath um, this, this webinar screen. Even below that, there's a button that says uh, that if you're not ready to enroll yet and you need some more details, you can click on that button and it will take you through to um, a landing page uh, for the course which gives you a lot more information, much more information about the curriculum, about how much, um, uh, how long it will take you to get through the, through, through the course and everything that you're going to learn from it and all the, the, the benefits that you're going to get from it. So if you're ready to enroll now, you can just click that and enroll straight away, or you can click through to the page and do some more reading, and you can enroll right on the page there as well. Okay, um, there are five modules on the course, and there's over eight hours of exclusive video lessons. When I say exclusive, I mean you will not find these lessons anywhere else. In fact, I've never found anywhere else, any other course that teaches about data cleaning in depth. They all brush over the top of, of the subject very, very quickly because well, data cleaning is messy and it's not sexy. Uh, it, you can go to lots of data cleaning courses uh, and um, they'll all mention data cleaning, but they brush over it so quickly because they don't want to deal with it. It's, it's horrible. Yeah, you're right, it is horrible. It's, it, it's not sexy, it's not nice, but it's very, very important. It underpins everything that you do. It's why I'm teaching it. Uh, there's nobody else teaching this out there. So there's uh, over eight hours of exclusive video lessons that you will not be able to find anywhere else. And when you enroll in the course, you will get permanent access to all the course material. Even if the course material changes over time, you will still get access. You will get access to all the new material forever. Okay, so I, I want to thank everybody for, for joining me for this webinar. I'm, I'm going to wrap it up now in the, within the next next few minutes. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's, 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 that's joined me here, and I want to thank everybody that has, uh, that has bought this course. Um, the places have filled up very, very quickly for this. There are only a few left. Uh, so if you're gonna if you're gonna get it, you you really need to get a move on and and, and get it to, and get signed up for it, get enrolled to it. Um, and I want to thank everybody that has uh, that has bought this course. And without you, uh, we wouldn't be able to, to to do this. So thank you very much. And if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to um, to put them in the uh, in the the chat window. And I'm, I'm still here. I'll I'll still answer a few questions. Even when the webinar is closed down, I'll still be here for another few minutes to answer your to any questions that anybody's got. Uh, very quickly, just finally before we before we finish up, uh, I just want to give you a, a quick reminder uh, of of the cost. The price is currently two nine seven. Uh, this offer will expire at 9 p.m. British Summer Time. That's 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Thursday, the 1st of June. That's in two. It's in exactly two days. And after this, the price will go up to 397. So if you want to save yourself $100, get in before the deadline. And you need to be quick because the places are, are filling up. And once once all the places are, fill, uh, are filled, that's it. There won't be any more. Just to let you know, there will be a replay of this webinar. Uh, I will sort this out once it's, if everything's worked out okay, I will sort it out, I will put it on our website and I will email you when it's live. You can come back and you can uh, you can check it out at, at your leisure. Um, come and, and review the, um, the all the data cleaning stuff that we've, that we've done today in Excel. Uh, go through it again, make sure that you fully understand what, what it is that we've done. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And I hope you'll join me for future webinars. So for now, uh, I'm going to close the webinar, but I'm still going to be here for the chat. If anybody wants to ask me any questions, please feel free. I'm going to stay around for another five minutes or so. But for, for the moment, for now, uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you, and good night.